Let us pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Jesus, through the Immaculate Heart of Mary, I offer you my prayers, works, joys and sufferings on this day for all the intentions of your Sacred Heart in union with the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass throughout the world in reparation for my sins, for the intentions of all my relatives and friends, and in particular for the intentions of the Holy Father. Amen. The Intention of the Holy Father for the month of February For Parishes We pray that parishes placing communion at the center may increasingly become communities of faith, fraternity and welcome towards those most in need. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. My dear friends, as we gather together to spend this time with Jesus, let us begin today's morning prayer with an attitude of gratitude by thanking the Lord for all the wonderful things that He has done for us. We thank Him first and foremost for the gift of life. We thank Him for giving us this new day, a day which will help us to do many things. Maybe we may complete some uncompleted or unfinished tasks. Or maybe today could be an opportunity to make a difference in the lives of others. Whatever we may do today, we need to ask the Lord to be present in our every activity so that whatever we do may be in accordance with the plan that He has for each and every one of us. So as you spend this time with Jesus, thank Him for all that He has done for us. And at the same time, we shall also ask the Lord for the graces that we require. At this moment, let us take this opportunity to share with Jesus all our joys, all the moments of satisfaction, the moments of happiness that we have in our life. And at the same time, let us also offer to Him all that worries us, all that troubles us, all those anxious moments in our life. Let us place all of these at the feet of the Lord and let, let us also bring to our mind all our intentions, all that we require. Let us ask the Lord. Jesus says, Come to me, all you who are burdened, and I will give you rest. We all long for this rest. And as we spend this time with Jesus, let us truly place all our troubles at his feet. And now, my dear friends, today, let us reflect and meditate on Psalm 40. 
Initially, we'll have a general overview of the psalm and then we shall focus in detail at the various aspects of Psalm 40. So, when we look at Psalm 40, we see that Psalm 40 is a beautiful declaration of the love of God and it begins, we see, with a declaration of the steadfast love of the Lord. Now, Psalm 40 is also a powerful psalm of hope and deliverance because it speaks of joy and comfort that comes from being rescued from trouble and from being lifted up from the depths of despair. In life, we often come across situations where all hope is lost, where things become difficult. And it is in these moments that truly we can place our faith and trust in the Lord. In those moments, this psalm can be a psalm of reassurance. This psalm can be a psalm that gives us hope to long for. And therefore, we see that this psalm is also a song of gratitude and thanksgiving to God for all his faithful love and care. And now as we have had a general overview of the psalm, let us go and look at the psalm reflecting on each verse or a group of verses. Now we see that the psalm begins with a declaration of faith in God's steadfast love. And therefore verse 1 would be, I waited patiently for the Lord, he inclined to me and heard my cry. And this speaks of the deep trust and confidence that the psalmist has in God's love and care. Now, despite difficulties, despite the challenges that the psalmist faced, he knew that God was always there to listen to his cry and to help him out in these moments of distress. As we have seen, all of us have challenges in our lives. How do we react to the challenges? Do we give up? Do we lose hope and faith? Or like the psalmist, do we increase our faith and trust in the Lord? Now the second verse, we see that the psalmist speaks of the deliverance that God has provided. And what does he say? He says, he brought me up out of the pit of destruction, out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock making my step secure. And this verse speaks of the profound transformation that God has brought about in the life of the psalmist. He has been rescued from the depths of despair and placed on a solid foundation. His transformation is indeed a testament to God's power and grace. And it is important to see the imagery that is shown here being stuck in clay and then being placed on a rock. And in our lives, we see that when we face challenges, when we face troubles in life, things seem difficult, just like we are stuck in clay. But then we see the Lord has the power to transform us. The Lord takes away our weaknesses and makes it into our strength. It makes it into our strong points. And therefore, we see that the Lord is capable of doing anything and everything with us. All that we need to do is surrender ourselves to him. And therefore we see that as the psalm progresses, the psalmist goes on to describe the gratitude that he feels for God's deliverance. He says, many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. And this indeed will speak that God's deliverance is immense. It will see and show us the impact that God's deliverance has had on others. And therefore the psalmist's testimony has inspired others to put their faith and trust in the Lord. And this is indeed a great joy and satisfaction for the psalmist. We hope that after meditating on this psalm, we too will be inspired to place our faith and trust in the Lord, to rely on the Lord for everything, to surrender ourselves completely to his hands so that he knows 
what he does with us so that we feel secure in his hands and therefore in verses 5 to 7 we see that the psalmist will speak of the sacrifices that he has made to serve God he says you do not require sacrifice or I would give it you do not delight in burnt offering the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit a broken and contrite heart O God you will not despise now what does this tell us this speaks of the importance of a humble and contrite heart and this humbleness is very important when it comes to approaching God when it comes to serving God and here the psalmist recognizes that God does not require elaborate sacrifices he does not require big offerings but rather he requires a heart that is truly devoted to him therefore Jesus on many occasions stressed on the importance of humility and generosity he says rather than offering big sacrifices doing good deeds to others being a good neighbor showing love towards one another was something that is truly valued and we see that in verses 8 to 10 the psalmist will then speak of the troubles that he has faced and the way in which God has sustained him through all those challenges in life he says I delight to do your will O my God your law is within my heart and this tells us of the deep commitment that the psalmist has in serving God and living according to his will now despite all the difficulties he has faced he has remained steadfast in his devotion to God and then in the final verses of the psalm the psalmist speaks of the hope he has in God's deliverance he says Lord let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you let those who love your salvation say continually great is the Lord and this indeed speaks of the joy and peace that comes from knowing God and from trusting his love and care the psalmist indeed knows that God will always be there to deliver him from trouble and to lift him up from the depths of despair and in conclusion we can say that Psalm 40 is indeed a powerful and inspiring psalm that speaks of the joy and comfort that will come when we are rescued from trouble and the joy that comes from being lifted from the depths of despair it is indeed a song of gratitude and thanksgiving to God for his faithful love and care the testimony of the psalmist of God's deliverance has indeed inspired others and in this way it has led others to place their faith and trust in God and this very fact is a source of great joy for the psalmist and the psalm invites us to be humble to focus on doing good to others and now my dear friends let us close our eyes at this morning hour and let us thank the Lord let us praise him let us glorify him for all the wonderful things that he has done for us for all that he continues to do and for all that he will do for us in the future loving father you have given us this time in the morning you have been gracious to us you have given us your son our Lord Jesus Christ who has cleansed us from our sins he has taken away all our sins and he has given us new life Lord you have given us the Holy Spirit and we ask you Lord to bless us and protect us for all this Lord we thank you we bless you and we glorify you you have protected us and you have guided us all through the night and you have given us this time to spend with you you have given us the gift of this new day a day to make a difference in the lives of others and Lord we ask you whatever we may do today be with us be part of our activities be part of our work so that through our work through our activities we may be able to radiate your love peace and joy and Lord as we reflect on this psalm 
we ask for the grace of being humble. And now let us spend a few moments in silence, reflecting on this psalm, allowing the psalm to take root in us. It is only when we make the psalm personal that truly we will be inspired by it. So as we spend these moments in silence, let us reflect on a line or a thought that touched us after meditating on the psalm. And let us ask the Lord for the grace that we may be humble, that we may devote our lives towards enriching the lives of others. Prayer to Saint Michael the Archangel for protection. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of of the heavenly hosts by the power of God thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Act of Adoration O Sacrament Most Holy O Sacrament Divine all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Saint Gertrude Prayer for Souls in Purgatory Eternal Father, I offer thee the most precious blood of thy divine Son, Jesus, in union with the masses said throughout the world today for all the holy souls in purgatory, for sinners everywhere, for sinners in the universal church, those in my own home and within my family. Amen. May the divine assistance remain always with us and may the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God Rest in peace. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.